workshop. So, meeting is being recorded. So, let us introduce them. So, give me a second. Aha, there we go. For lab skills portion of the event, we're going to meet another instructor from the Department of Biology. Now, our lecturer for this morning is currently undertaking his PhD. His current research interests include molecular systematics and Philippine biodiversity, as well as freshwater ecology and beetle systematics. And he's no stranger to the academe, ladies and gentlemen, having co-authored several papers describing new species of beetles. If all these science research feats, by and then he is an educator. He teaches several classes under the biology department, such as zoology, ecology, systematics, evolutionary biology, biodiversity, entomology, advocating for sustainable development, and many other things. Not only that, but he's also part of the technical working panel reviewing sci science senior high school textbooks for the Department of Education for the Philippines. Not only that, he is also close to the Ateneo Biological Organization as he served as the first editor-in-chief of the Helix publication and the first programs team of the Ateneo Biology Camp, the predecessor of the PBO during his undergrad years, as well as founding and moderating Box SHS for those Ateneo kids where he taught in Ateneo, Ateneo de Manila Senior High School. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, for our wonderful and illustrious speaker, give a round of applause to Emmanuel D. Delocado. Ah, thank, thank you, sir, for the protective equipment. Yes, hello. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I hope you have a very pleasant morning, especially coming from the breakout room, okay? Welcome to the Biodiversity Lab of the Ateneo. Yes, I'm the only one here right now. And I'm here to give you a workshop, well, the first part of the workshop on systematic, okay? Um, before we begin with that, uh, hello, nice to meet you. Um, before we begin with that, no? I would like to get your perception or your understanding of the term systematic, okay? So at this point, um, Gabby will share with you the link to our Mentimeter to get our idea on systematic. Okay, so what I want to do is to input three words that you can associate with the term systematic. And Gabby will also be sharing to us the, the outcomes of your answer. So everyone, again, Input three one-word responses which you associate with the word systematic, with the field of systematic. Responses are anonymous. I don't think it will be considered as part of your, you know, of your PBO standing. Okay, so just really enter your responses into, um, into the link. So we're waiting for people to respond. So clear naman yung instructions so without doing a Google search because your responses will remain anonymous. Okay? So ninyo kailang kabahan. Just really enter three words. So guys, we're still waiting for people to send in your responses. Come on. Okay, there we go. Again, so most of the responses, no? This is a, though if you are not familiar with this, this is a word cloud, no? The bigger the word, the more number of people responded with that answer, okay? So you can see here in maraming classification, evolution, phylogenetics, taxonomy, diversity, um, phylogeny, organization. And there are also words which are, well, smaller, you know, like naming, system, similarity, order, family, sorting, populations, etc. Those are very much related to systematic. Okay. So what I will do now is I will actually um, introduce you to the field of systematic by primarily uh, this um, defining key terminology. After we have a good orientation of the field of systematics, what we'll do later on is we'll work on the workshop for today, which is the Cosmos key, okay? Yeah, so as you can see here, uh, whenever we say systematics, it, is usually, uh, it usually pertains to two subfields. 
taxonomy and phylogenetics. Okay? So essentially, you know, what we did is we defined a big word by using two more big words. Diba? Um, taxonomy, I'll go into that in greater detail mamaya. But phylogenetics is uh, a simple definition we can provide is the evolutionary relationship of organisms. So how is species A related to species B? Is species A closely related to species B than species C? Those are the questions being answered in phylogenetics or phylogeny. Okay. As for taxonomy, I'll reserve that for a little later. Okay. And you mentioned some of the words which are very much related to systematics, one of which is evolution. Okay. Um, since the field of systematics is possible because of evolution, evolution believes that we have one tree of life, which is, this is one representation of that. That all organisms that you see, whether those are bacteria, archaea, fungi, um, plantae, animalia, and protista, they belong to one tree of life, all coming from a common ancestor. Okay? That's, uh, that's evolution, it evolved from one common ancestor. And you can see here how plants are related to animals and how angiosperms, which are plants, are related to another group, namely gymnosperm. Okay? That is how systematic is related to evolution. More obviously, systematics is related to biodiversity because that's the focus of systematic. It covers how um, diverse the organisms are because, yeah, after all, what do we name? What do we classify? These are living organisms. However, I'd like you to bear in mind that whenever we speak of biodiversity, we refer to three levels species, genetic, ecosystem. Okay? You can say that there are, say, hypothetically 20,000 plant species in a given area. Is it uh, rich in biodiversity? Maybe, but we also have to check if there are different ecosystems present. Meron bang flowing water, flowing fresh water, and stagnant fresh water? Meron bang different altitudes present in mountains, etc. Okay, and of course, genetic diversity, which includes variation and mutation. Okay. Now, as promised, we will delve into the word taxonomy. Essentially, when we say taxonomy, it refers to the DINK, okay, the DINK of organism, description, identification, nomenclature or naming, and the classification of organism. Okay? If you look at them, if you look at the words, hopefully you can differentiate them, right? But these are undeniably very closely related, okay? And so it's not about taxes, no? Taxonomy is not a study of taxes. If you have questions at any point, by the way, you know, feel free to comment on the chat. And uh, what's this? And um, if you feel like sharing your insights uh, so far, you know, feel free to comment them in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Let's start with D, which is description. Anong ginago? Usually when I ask this in kasi anong ginagawa sa description, then they describe. Totoo nga naman, di ba? Um, and that's actually part of systematics of taxonomy. Okay. You, um, but if we are to come up with a more etchos, with a more elaborate uh, definition of description, it's a delegation or assignment of features to a taxon. Like you see a plant, for example, you describe its shape. So hindi lang siya elongated or leaf shape or eye, ano, uh, eye shape, ganyan, di ba? There are different terms which you can um, use, okay? We don't expect you, I don't think the PTO core also expects you not to um, to memorize the term, so don't panic. This is just for illustration purposes. Okay? You describe uh, the tip of the leaf, the base, yung sa ilalim, the margin, okay? the arrangement of the leaf. Okay? These are some of the parameters uh, that you can use to describe a leaf. Okay? Leaf lang yan. So, iba pa sa seed, iba pa sa flowers, iba pa sa stem and root. Okay? Uh, we use the term character to refer to the categories. So, for example, an in character, leaf shape is a character. But an example of a character state or a variant is ovate or linear. Okay? Parang character is size, the character state is big or small. Okay? So, leaf tip, 
character is lifted and by uh, character states you have accumulate acute etc etc you have a question here do description only focus on the physical state of a taxon very good question no um and the answer to that is for the purpose of taxonomic description yes okay because we want na for example makita ka ng halaman or an insect um, or any organism, no, you can characterize it. And you can, quote-unquote, identify it by just looking at that. Okay? So we do away, we tend to do away for now with behavior, with molecular, with sensor nakira, ecological, um, and for uh, distribution, biogeography. We do away with that for description. Okay? Can we refer to character as the features or traits that a species share? Um, I would say yes, no, these are features that they share, no, and that's why for each one, uh, for each, well, species or organism that you have, no, you can assign a uh, state for that character because they all have that character, okay? Okay, just keep your questions coming on. Those are very interesting questions, okay? Again, so... Okay, that's cute, no? Like, we identify that's doing science pala. No? Describe mo lang yung nakita mo that's doing science and that's doing taxonomy. Um, but if we are to be, to be technical about it, um, in order for you to claim that a species is new, you need to come up with a comprehensive taxonomic description. So the, this is a description. Actually, hindi pa yun yung entire description of total doc. Uh, this is part of the description for Hydrina Ateneo, the Ateneo, uh, sorry, the beetle species that was found in Ateneo in 2013. Okay, um, so you can see, no, I don't, we don't expect you to understand what in the world is a pronatal elytral angle of juice, diba? Uh, but the point I, which I'm trying to make here is that the head is being described. The part known as labrum, whatever that is, is being described. The clipeus, whatever that is, is being described. The, the elytra, the, uh, sorry, the adegus, which is the genitalia, is being described comprehensive. Everything, every part is being described. Okay? In order for you to say na, okay, this is a new species, we're describing it. Can the description be about the internal physical state of attack? So you mean like internal anatomy? Um, Usually, no, but in particular occasions, yes. What do I mean by that? For example, no, may mga very distinct, like yung arrangement ng lungs, yung, yung number of chambers of the heart, diba? Saan yung location ng uh, spiracles, right? If you're familiar, yung breathing pathway for some arthropods, those are very useful. But, um, but, we, again, tend to stick with what can be obviously observed, okay? Maybe I should highlight, though, that for insects, and this might, I don't know how you'll react to this, no? Description of new species for insects um, is based on the appearance of the male genitalia. The male genitalia uh, looks different, of one individual looks different from another individual. It's likely, or it is, a different so to answer the question on the internal anatomy, yun nga, there are particular um, uh, internal anatomical features which serve as species. Okay? Yeah. Let's move on to I. So we're done with description. We understood it, no? You practically describe it, diba? Is it because insects have very specific genitalia before we move to identification? Let's answer this. The answer is yes, no? Um, insects have very specific genitalia. Um, are you familiar with, what is this? Are you familiar with the biological species concept? Thumbs up if you are. Yes, no? Um, no, okay. Uh, well, essentially, ganito, sige. I'll explain it this way. Um, the male genitalia serves as an important identifier for species among insects because it works with lock and key mechanism. Two, following the, what we call the biological species concept, because, um, organisms or individuals belong to one species if they can mate and they can produce 
on a fertile offspring. Okay? Very important yung first part that they can meet. Bakit? Kasi for insects, the genitalia are very specific such that it works in a lock and key mechanism. If the male genitalia is not compatible to the female genitalia, then there's no mating that's gonna happen. Okay? Ganun siya specific and that's why the genitalia is a very important indicator for the newness of the species or identification in general of species. Okay? Sige. Question? Sige. Next, identification. Identification, um, we define it as association of an unknown specimen to a known established taxon. So, pag nakita mo, you can identify. You can identify, ah, okay, that snail is this species. Or this beetle is Hydrena Ateneo. You can identify that using the description. However, if it's new or if it looks new, okay, I can't identify it. This part looks very different from the species I encountered then you can claim that you have sufficient evidence to establish it as a new species. Okay? Um, a, a tool usually used for that is taxonomic keys, and I'll go into taxonomic keys and couplet later. Okay? Yeah. Just to be clear to everyone, know what uh, people in taxonomy and systematics do, it's not like, well, mostly, hindi naman ganito, na whenever you see an, a plant in real life or an insect in real life, you know, hindi naman kami naglalakad around campus and, oh, it's this species, oh, it's this species, oh, it's this species, no. Hindi naman siya ganun. Okay? After all, as you learned kanina, some of the, figure, some of the features uh, need um, to be, I guess, dissected kasi they are created internally, di ba? Yeah. Next, and naming, nomenclature, okay? Formal naming of taxa with adherence to standardized system. There are different systems. It's a separate system for animals, the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature, one code for bacteria, International Code of Nomenclature of Bacteria, and then one clump group for algae, fungi, and plants. Okay, then of course you have separate for virus, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but point being, there's a unique set of rules which apply for different taxons. Okay? But of course, there are similarities in the rules, with, uh, whether it's a plant, animal, and whatnot. For example, uh, you probably have learned that scientific name should be italicized, no? If it's printed, okay? That's uh, heavily being followed, no? That you italicize scientific names whenever they are printed, okay? Pag handwritten, siempre you don't need to like slant your writing. But if it's printed, it should be in italic, okay? And we name species, nomenclature, for nomenclature, we name species using the genus and what we call the specific epithet, okay? The scientific name, I hope this is clear to everyone, the scientific name is Hydrena Ateneo. The genus is Hydrena. The specific epithet is Ateneo. Ateneo is not the scientific name. The scientific name is the entire Hydrena Ateneo. Okay, we usually, uh, um, officially, the name should be Hydreno Ateneo Freitag, 2013. Freitag refers to the scientist who discovered and described it, okay, in the year 2013. Okay, that's the official way of naming um, species, complete. And of Does course, you don't... specific epithet refer to the main thing that's used to identify it? Like the main the unique Ateneo. feature? Uh, the specific epithet here is Ateneo. Thank you for your question, no? The specific epithet practically is the second name of the scientific name. Okay? Yeah. I hope that's clear, no? Sir, um, is it determined? Like, sorry? The, so, so, sorry, sir, how is the specific epithet determined? Like, how do you decide, like, if you find a new species... How do you decide what it should be? Yes, it's essentially, and this is the part um, we usually laugh about now, because you can, you have so much freedom with this one. Essentially, you can name it with anything, however you want to name it. Okay, there are certain rules lang, like if it's named after um, a male, you know, a person, a male, 
um, the the last what's this? What do you call it? The suffix should be I. Like if it's named after um Freytag, for example, it should be Freytag. You know. If it's named after a female, iba rin yung suffix. If it's named after a place, usually insist. Palawan, ni, ano? Palawan, palawa. Wait, palawa, palawanensis. There you go. Mindorensis, Filipinensis, mga ganyan, di ba? Um, but practically, the the decision to call it Teneo, Mindoro, Palawan, or whatever, di ba, is up to the scientists. So we have scientists have played a lot with this. Naming um, naming an ant after Cory Aquino. No may logic naman kasi she's into conservation, blah, blah, blah. Um, a beetle was named after Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, Anceronics, Leonardo DiCaprio. So practically, it's up to the scientists. Okay? Yeah. Uh, however, you don't have to write the entire thing every single time. Um, after succeeding mentions, you can abbreviate the genome. So H at the na lang. As long as in, uh, on the first time, it was clearly spelled out completely. Yes, that's correct, no? The, this is genome, and of course, gene um, nomenclature is a different thing, right? But yeah, that's true, no? There, there's a, a sonic hedgehog gene, among other pretty interesting things. And lastly, uh, last one in the ding is the classification. Okay? Arrangement of taxa by cataloging. That's how you classify naman, eh, diba? You put it in one major group, and then you move it to a subgroup, move it to a subgroup. Um, some, uh, what's this? Some imageries would be, you know, like library, diba? Whether you have the Dewey Decimal or the Library of Congress system. If it's, uh, if it's Library of Congress, O ano ba siya? Sa letter A ba siya? B, C, D. Then after that, there's a second letter, di ba? Is it A, 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 B, A, C, A, C, A, D, A, A, E, etc. Then you have the numbers pa. So that's how it goes here. You have, for example, Pantera pardus. Classify it under Eukarya. It's a eukaryotic organism. It's an animal. So kingdom animalia. Then you have you put it under Cordit. Then a smaller group known as uh, class mammalia. Smaller group known as order carnivora, etc., etc. Okay. As for Hydrain Ateneo, you have the following grouping. No? So, Eukarya, it's an animal, it's an arthropod, it's an insect, Coleoptera, it's a beetle, family Hydrainidae, genus Hydrena, species yes, Hydrain Ateneo. Okay. So, that's, classi that's classification. Take note that there are particular endings for the name. No? Uh, for animals, um, you have. Family ending in idea, limnikide, okay, or well, gen, more general would be dea, okay, na yun, no? Order usually ends in ra, um, then genus and species, wala naman. There are intermediate groupings like some families, a tribe, subtribe, and they have particular ending also, okay? But family dea, no, that's a very easy identifier. Uh, whenever you see dea, family. Oh, that's an interesting, you know, like if that's the only thing you're doing in the world, no, it can take a week. I think more that's more than enough na, to establish it. Of course, communicating it, you know, like to the world, you know, like publishing it ganyan, is a different story. But, you know, more or less you have evidences, sufficient evidence within a week to establish that it's in a new Description is detailing the attribute. That's correct. Identification is categorizing. Identification, I guess, more when um I, I would put identification more as providing the name, right? Like, oh, you see that, oh, that's a Homo sapiens. You see that, that's a magnifier indica, that's a mango, you know, that's identification. Um, but if you are categorizing the attributes, maybe um it's providing the species using the um the attributes using the description. Baka mas ganun yung identification, but the use of categorizing, I classify it as classification. Okay? Yan. Nomenclature, uh, yeah, naming. Um, not only naming, but I guess, well, that's correct, no? naming the species, but following the rules. Mas ganun siguro yun. No? And then classification is organizing. 
the species according to this particular system that you're seeing on your screen. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of species to be discovered in, in the Philippines. I mean, another thing of things I'm going to say, well, number one, obvious naman. Kasi we still have a lot of things to study. Okay. Um, yeah, classification for plants, it's a bit different. Okay. Class is Opsida, that's the ending. Family, if for animals, it's Dea. Here, it's Asiae. So, uh, Euphorbiaceae, um, ano ba? Et cetera. Okay, different, uh, different family. Uh, all families end in Asiae. Okay? Phylum is Phyta. Ayan, then order is Alex. So, different endings for different, um, for plants and for animals. Okay? Ayan. Uh, classification, another concept I'd like to uh, you to note under identification, oh, sorry, under classification is uh, phenetic and phylogenetic classification. This is very important. Okay? What we have been establishing so far is using morphology. Okay, using external morphology. Well, okay, fine. Morphology in general, kasi may genitalia tayong minention. Okay, that's phenetic classification. If they look the same, same category, same classification, that's phenetic, okay? External, morpho well, morphology in general, fine, okay? Phylogenetic, however, is based on evolutionary history. Um, and maybe this is where I want to highlight that for today's session, for today's workshop, it will be um, an introspection of phenetic classification and for next week, it will be on phylogenetic classification. Okay, so today, nasa ano lang tayo, if they look the same, sige, they're similar. And you know, that's not quite true, di ba? Kasi there, you have, ano ba? You have uh, mammals, which can swim, which have wings, di ba? But they're mammals, di ba? They're mammals which lay their egg, but they're mammals. They're not reptiles, they're not amphibians, they're mammals, okay? But again, our focus for today's phonetic classification is um, morphology. How do you look? If they look the same, same category. Simple as that. Okay. Uh, yen. Um, while it appears, well, hopefully, you find it exciting, hopefully. Um, while it appears exciting, no, um, really, it's obviously not a very easy thing to do, right? And there are very simple, you know, very simple species or organisms that are tricky for, you know, like layman, right? Like, and so, in, uh, it, what is? Spider nga lang, eh, di ba? Insecto yan, yan. But technically, insects have six legs, three pairs of legs, di ba? And spiders, as you know, they have eight. So, you know, very different. Yan. Um, so again, to recap our introduction to systematics, systematics links taxonomy and phylogenetics. Taxonomy refers to the link of an organism, and phylogenetics is how the species are related, evolutionary history, okay, how they are related um, in, uh, throughout the, uh, the period of evolution, okay? By and then, systematics is a pure science. It's not cancer research. That's true, di ba? Anong ginagawa mo sa systematics? Wala, nag-describe-describe ng organism. May new species, din describe describe ko. Okay? Um, but that's important. Bakit? For example, you make a drug out of a different plant kasi kamukha niya yung isang plant, but it was improperly identified, di ba? Edy, that could have little impact. Okay? Or if you're trying to, um, or, or reverse naman, no? if you're trying to address, address a particular disease, let's say, because it's, a, it's an obvious emerging topic now, a particular virus, di ba? Do it not living. Uh, you're identifying a virus, mali yung pagka-identify mo because you fail to take note of particular, you know, structures on the, on the what's this, how do you call it? On the lipid membrane then what you are giving the patient could be potentially lethal to the patient and to the patient's immunity, diba? And surely there are a lot more applications of studying systematics despite systematics 
being a basic or pure science. Okay? Questions? <clears throat> Question? Okay tayo. Kailan ba ng breather? Okay naman. Sige. So, um, the next part would be uh, species identification via dichotomous species. Okay? And this is the part wherein you will have your workshop. Okay. Sige. Questions are good. Eh? So here for this part, no, I would, um, I think, I, well, I hope, no, you felt na for the first part, okay, it's interesting, pero at the same time, napaka-basic. So what's identification, di ba? Parang, it's very basic, no? Um, binigyan natin sila ng ng etos na description. We tried to prov we tried to articulate some form of description or sorry definition to the terminology, which are you know we commonly use anyway. Diba? For this part, we would well I would ask for your participation in the polls because we will be identifying species. Okay. Again, let me start by saying that the diversity of life on Earth is so enormous. Okay. Um, again, by diversity, whenever we say the diversity, it refers to species, genetic, and ecosystem diversity. It refers to the variety of life on Earth and the essential interdependence of all living things. Um, currently, we describe more or less 2 million species. Very small, to be honest. No? Uh, but the expectation is that there are, well, the estimate is funny, no? Kasi from 7 million to 100 million species in the world. So, di ba parang nakakatawa? Ang laki ng range. 7 million to 100 million. Probably what's safe is 7 to 9 million species all in all. So, we describe less than one-fourth of what exists. And out of what exists, a great vast majority, or oh, great na, vast na, di ba, majority, would be animals. And, the biggest fraction of animalia or arthropods, phylum arthropoda. And the great portion, the greatest portion of arthropods are insecta, class insecta. And the biggest portion of class insecta are beetles, order coleoptera. Coleoptera lang, oh, by the way, this is from a figure from 2005, so you know, it's, I mean, it's very, uh, what's this, it's very uh, outdated. But nonetheless, the fractions, no, the por uh, proportions to reflect the current value. Okay? But I like it. It's a nice figure. Okay? Um, a great majority now would be beetles. That's why our focus here in the biodiversity lab is identifying new species of insects and beetles, especially beetles. Uh, not only in the Philippines, but practically, you know, like Southeast Asia and Europe. Okay? Yeah. Our focus is the Philippines for obvious reasons, number one, right? Number two, because we are one of the biodiversity hotspots. No spiders, bro. Wait, mm -hmm. hello. Yes, okay. Um, we're one of the biodiversity hotspots. Whenever, and please, I want to be clear about this. Whenever we say biodiversity hotspots, number one, it should have great level of endemicity. Species which can be found only in that area. Okay, pwede endemic to Mindoro, endemic to Luzon, endemic to the Philippines. Pwede yun, eh? Pero that's part of it. Kailangan maraming endemic. So in short, hindi siya hotspot kung, okay, ang dami nating plants, pero kita naman pala lahat ng plants na to sa Southeast Asia. Okay? So kailangan may endemicity. And number two, which, which people often forget, even biologists, is that in order for it to be considered a biodiversity hotspot, the level of threat should be high. Okay? That there is a high level of threat, especially to destruction of ecosystem. Remember, biodiversity, the bio species, the net ecosystem. Okay? So, okay, marami tayong unique to us, but at the same time, marami tayong places na sinisira or nasisira. At patuloy na masisira. So, is it nice to, to be a biodiversity hotspot? Uh, yes and no. Right? Kasi, and then yes, yeah. But nonetheless, these are uh, the key foci for places for, or sorry, um, localities 
uh, in which biodiversity conservation should be promoted. Sir, how come that's the definition for number two? Like, what's the purpose of number two? Is that just for saying, okay, this area has to be protected? Or this is where we should focus our protection efforts on, our protection preservation efforts on? Is that the purpose, yes, sir? Exactly. You're very correct, no? Uh, these areas have been identified because, you know, there's... Um, spe- there are a lot of species which are unique to, unique to the area. At the same time, it's facing environmental damage. And when you damage an ecosystem, you don't know the extent of the damage it leads to. Diba? Hindi lang naman forest destruction, wala na wala yung puno. Hindi tayo hayo, diba? And we're not only talking about, you know, the big ano ba, cows and carabals and whatnot that roam around in the area. There are um, organisms living on the leaves, on the branches, on the soil on the small patches of water present in the area. We don't know the extent of its disruption. High level of threat, do we mean vulnerable to disruption by human activities? Mostly, yes. Okay. I'm saying mostly. I mean, my answer, if you want my personal opinion, my answer is yes. But I'm saying mostly yes because, you know, um, environmental decay is partly, though very small, um, occurs naturally, right? Like decay happens, entropy, right? Uh, decay happens naturally. But it is, what's the term? Triggered, um, magnified, I guess, exacerbated by human activity. Okay? We don't need to discuss the threats we are facing in the Philippines, no? Um, because there's really a lot. Okay? Obviously, in quite bias, I'll be focusing on the destruction or the um, what's this? Um, extinction of insects, entomofauna, entomology is a study of insects. Okay. This graph coming from a rather recent paper tells us saan maraming insect decline or insect population decline. Okay. You can in the bar different colors refer to different um, orders. So polyoptera, etc. Okay. You can see here that pinakamaraming decline the insect diversity is in Europe and in the US. Right? Wala nga sa Philippines eh, di ba? But do you believe that? Okay? The quick answer is, no, we are not necessarily, what is, we are not necessarily not experiencing that decline. It's just, we don't have data 30 years from now, uh, 40, uh, sorry, uh, 30 years in the past, going back 30 years before, we don't have data 40 years before the present time. We don't have data 50 years, 60, 70 years to compare our current diversity. So we lack baseline. Okay? Ayan, di ba dolomite o oh, no? Ayan. So that's why we're working on this, kasi on identification of the species here, because decades from now, wow, decades from now, we want people to claim that, okay, we can actually say that my decline because we basis tayo on what exists in the year of 2020, 2021. Okay? And we need more boots on the ground. Sorry, dun sa patirado dun sa, it's not cancer research. No? Because that's our reality here no? as, um, as researchers. Um, we need more boots on the ground. People tend to focus on, you know, we call it a, like cancer research, but essentially, of course, you know, it's not just cancer, but a lot of other medical, um, consi- uh, what's this, medical issues, which are very important. But at the same time, we need more people in the ground. The ongoing neglect of biodiversity research impedes the, con- the process, the progress of conservation of life at all levels in all taxonomic groups. We're studying species which are running extinct before we describe them, before we discover them. But we, as bio- biodiversity researchers, as systematic biologists, are also endangered species. So we need more boots on the ground to do this study. Why is taxonomy important? Earlier, no, we talked about, you know, yung plant, um, kailangan tama yung pag-identify. Baka mamaya, gawin mong drug yun, gawin mong medicine yun, pero hindi pala tama yung chemicals na nandun. But also, it has implications to what we have. Proper, my students would always hear me say this. Proper conservation biology only makes sense in light of proper taxonomy. Case in point, the Enochrus beetle in, from the Mediterranean, they only thought it's just one species. 
there's just one species of Enochros found in the Mediterranean region. They tried to conserve it because it's one species. Lang yan, eh. Pag na extinct, yan, wala na yan. But later on, they realized that there are four different species. They also realized that the conservation effort that they paid attention to towards the species that they thought to be just one greatly affects negatively two species. So yes, they discovered there are four species, but they also discovered that you know their efforts practically drove two of those species to extinct. So endangered na sila. Diba? Because um, each species have their particular, ano, have their particular niche, have their particular requirement. Not only habitat, but nutritional requirement also. Okay? Practically what we're trying to say is you cannot save what you do not know. Okay? So, given the diversity of life on Earth, Given all the diversity of life on Earth, let's try to work on identification, or at least an, um, a portion of identification, okay? You're seeing three figures here, three pictures here. Uh, kindly answer the poll being launched by Gabby, whether you think the three figures belong to just one species or three species. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, one species or several species. We're expecting 50 votes. Okay, sige. Again, responses are anonymous, so it will not be counted as part of your score, etc., etc. Okay. I think that's fine. Okay, Gabby, maybe we can end it. Okay. And majority, uh, four fifths answered one species and that's actually correct, okay? These three dogs belong to just one species. They look very different. So kahit anong aso pa yan, isang species lang yan. Okay? Ayan. So you can see here the results of the poll. Majority answered one species. Let's have a go at another example. How about this? One species or several species? You see different colored beetles. By the way, maybe I should clarify that the basis for one group, you know, diff uh, sorry, the basis for identification for one group of organism differs to another group of organisms. So of course, you cannot generalize the, the basis for description. No? Yeah. I think we're good. Na? Gabi, maybe we can end it and share the results. Okay. Majority answered, uh, two thirds answered several species, but in, but the answer, is it belongs to just one species. Okay? Ayan. The point I'm trying to make here is identification can be very... Okay, sana kung pareho lang na orange-orange, di ba? Parang magkakamuka naman sa dots lang nagkakaiba. Pero yung iba black and then may patches of orange or whatever color that is, di ba? But it's just one species. It's the multicolored lady beetle, Harmonia axirita. Last, is this one? Gabi? Is it one species or several species? Anticipating na ba tayo sa synthesis? Kaya ganyan yung sagot natin sa poll. Sige, go lang. Put. Okay. I think we're good. We can end it. Okay, and most answered, several species, okay? And the correct answer, actually, kung oh, ano, hindi ko na-realize. Nasa, nasa citation pala siya. So, yes, 101 new species, okay? Kung oh, nga, no? Of Trigonopterus peoples. These are all very different species. I'd like to zoom into four in particular for you to, you know, syempre, nang hindi naman kasi makita dun sa small figure. Um, I would like to zoom into four. And you would see also the genitalia of the four, no? Um, you would see that they're somehow they're similar, but maybe you can point out that um, some striking differences also. Itong dalawa, mukhang pareho, right? But the genitalia looks different. 
Pero like if you compare these two to like this one or this one, then you know, mas striking na yung difference. Okay? So some of them obviously are more closely related morphologically, right? They look more similar, that's what I'm trying to say. Others are look very different naman. Okay? And yes, um, um, when you compare them, it can get tricky, but it's really an interesting field to, you know, to delve into. Is color a good basis of identification of species? In some species, as you will see later. Okay? But generally, generally, there is no rule. For birds, yes. Like, you see them flying. Kaya nga yung names ng birds, many birds, eh, diba? by color, eh, diba? Pero for others naman, hindi talaga. Yung sa kanina, sa lady beetle, uh, sa lady, by the way, a ladybug is a beetle, ah. so it's not a bug, it's a beetle. Um, if you want to know the difference, it's very, very long explanation. Um, ladybugs are beetles. Uh, so the lady beetle kanina, they look different, but just one species. And ito naman, color, iba-ibang, may differences naman sa color, no? kahit hindi nyo kita nang naka-zoom in. But they're different. So there's no general general rule about color. Okay? So the question now is, for example, you're given this. So to identify this, do you have to check the description of each and every single one? And to check if the description satisfies that. Diba? I hope you're getting the dilemma. No? 101 new species yun. Is we suppose marami nang nag-exist or na-describe before that and they have their long description. So ibig sabihin ba, you have to compare the figure that you have or the specimen that you have with each and every single description available. Siyempre may hindi pa available dyan kasi you, know, you can track the, the paper describing it. Diba? Do you have to do that? Uh, one, so yan, baka ganyan yung identification process na nangyari. No? What people think happens that, oh yes, lack of words. Let's think of distribution. No? But part of it really, as I told you, no, hindi naman siya memory of work na, ah, okay, alam ko na. It, kaya nga eh, what for me personally, systematics is about is the skill to do this. no, Rather than... Okay, that species something something. This is Wingardium leviosa. This is whatever species man ganyan. Okay, it's the skill of and well the rigor of course to having to go through that process, which is very taxing also. Okay, so do you have to compare it to every single description? The answer is no. Um, whenever available, whenever available, we use the dichotomous key. Oh, yes, spell the famous key. I just made it up, by the way. Wingardium leviosa. Oh my God, Wingardium leviosa is not a species, guys. Huh? Just so we're clear, okay? Um, we're, are we, yes, dichotomous keys. It's a tool that we use um, in identifying unknown organisms. Okay? Uh, they're composed of a series of couplets. I believe in literature, um, well, some would say couplet, some would say couplet. In systematics, we usually say couplet, which is a two-part statement. So practically, maybe better to show it with an example. This is um, a portion of a dichotomous key. Okay? So we're identifying uh, a bird. Actually, it's, not a, it's a key to the genus, so not species. Okay? A dichotomous key would have paired statements, and it works with either or. So the beak, is the beak relatively long and slender, or is the beak relatively stout and heavy? So you decide, okay? And we use characteristics which are clear yes and yes or no, either or, okay? We don't say na, we don't, um, and we try to not use those which can appear rather relative, diba? Sa birds naman kasi, what's long and slender and stout and heavy are, you know, very identifiable. They're very distinct. Hindi ka makakita ng big, long ba yan or, or no? Wala namang ganong dilemma. That's why we're using this. Okay? So, maybe better to have an example. Okay? Um, the beak, so let's look at bird W. The beak is relatively long and slender. Uh, it's not slender. That's quite obvious. But it's stout and heavy. In that case, we go to statement number two. Number two, I hope you're following, eh? 
And number two statement say na the bottom surface of the lower beak, ito yun, bottom surface of the lower beak is flat and straight. Is it flat and straight or is it curved? And I think you can tell that it is flat and straight. So the genus is Geospiza. Okay? So we don't have to go to number three anymore. Okay? Another one, bird Y. The beak is relatively long and slender. Okay? It's long and slender. So tapos tayo agad. It is 30 days. It's not stout. It's not heavy. It's not heavy looking also. This is heavy looking, eh, diba? So the genus is 30 day. Yeah. So we don't have to go through the other uh, couplets anymore. Yun yun. Okay? Question? Yeah. Yes, it looks like a flowchart. Is there a bare minimum number of parts to be compared as you saw, as you witnessed, no? Pag okay na, pag nakita mo na, na-identify, sorry, na-classify mo na, no? That's your identification na. You don't have to go through the different, um, different couplets. Okay? Question? Sige, so you try it. Gabby will launch the poll. And we want you to identify the genus. Okay, come on, keep your votes coming. Okay, we have 30, 40 votes in. There's a question uh, whether interpretation of the dichotomous keys can be subjective, which a point I will get into in a little while. Hello, can you show me a sign of life if you can hear me? Yes, I think, right? Okay, sorry, just some technical, yes. Okay, we have, eh, I, I think we can stop it, Gabby. Okay, great. Majority voted for Camarinpus, which is the right answer. Good. I hope you're able, well, obviously, no, most of you are able to identify it. Stout and heavy, go to number two. The bottom surface looks curved. Okay, it is. Then you go to three, the lower edge of the upper beak. Lower edge of the upper beak. As a distinction. Okay? Take note that the dichotomous keys are constructed in a parallel way. Diba? Beak is, the beak is. Actually, okay lang naman kahit beak relatively long and slender. Okay na yun, no? You drop the unnecessary words also. Beak relatively stout and heavy. Okay na yun. Okay? Ayan. So good. Good that you are um, doing well in practicing this. Let's have some more practice. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, let's go to species identification. Ayan. Okay. Um, I have to say this before I, I show you the picture. That I, well, number one, I'm well aware that you had some pre-recorded lectures on, on animal anatomy, um, invertebrate section. So some terminologies, I believe, are familiar. Or at least you heard them. Maybe you forgot about them, but you heard elytra pronotum and stuff like that. Um, yes, but nonetheless, you can proceed with this even without fully understanding all the terms here, because some of the, um, uh, some of the portions or some parts of the dichotomy should be enough for you to make your identification. Okay. Let's start with the first one. Gabby, can we launch the poll?
There we go. Alam, wala pang mabuboto, ha? Sige, go. Okay, fine. Maybe if you need a refresher, this is Pronotum, okay? Then this is Elytra. Elytra is practically the wing, which are visible for betas. The four wings to be technical, no? This Elytra, this is Pronotum. Sige, go lang. Okay, we have 25. We're expecting more votes to come in. Maybe we'll end in five seconds. Okay. And most answered Anceronix Buhid. Okay, let's answer this. So, um, Elytra with yellowish X-shaped color pattern. Walang X dito, this Elytra. Walang X na yellowish. So it's not Philhamery. Okay. So then we proceed with two, uh, with uh, statement number two. Because the Elytra has four isolated yellowish color patches. One, two, three, four. Okay. We go to two. It points out to body about so body size, okay, if you did the measuring with somehow with your, I don't know, with your thumb and whatnot, or ruler if you have, okay. But maybe something very um, obvious that we can use here are elytral patches, no? Many, I hope this is clear to everyone, many of the things in biology, you know, by context to it, diba? Elytra, this elytra, and these are the patches. Okay, you did not learn it probably as elytral patches, but you know this elytra? There are patches, okay? And the posterior, sa dulo, okay, yellowish, more or less round. Is it more or less round or is it elongate? And our, it's not elongate, so it's more or less round. Thus, the answer, which meant most of you got correctly, is it's Anceronix COVID, okay? Another one. And so after nito, dapat may meme na kayo na systematist. Yung para mga boinks meme. Sige. Okay, sige. We have only 16 people voted pa lang, ha? Sige. Maybe 30 seconds. Ako, interesting ang... Total of between two options. Okay. I guess we can end it. Okay, and the results would show you that majority voted Anceronix or answered Anceronix Minerva, which is the correct answer. Okay. So um it's not more or less round and like kanina, but elongate, diba? So ayan, elongate, yung posterior yellow which elytral patches. So we go to statement number three and that will show, uh, that will ask us to compare 
whether the pronotum, which is this portion, is entirely dark, which is not. Because you can see here, there is a yellow, um, yellowish band. No? Actually, yellow na nga talaga yan, yung yellowish, no? A yellowish band. But it's not entirely dark. Also, maybe something that would help, though this one might be a bit more tricky than the pronotum one, is that the anterior yellowish elytral patches, so anterior harap, elytral patches, patches, elytra, are large. Okay? These are rather large looking because ito yung harap na portion and, you know, malaki naman yung position niya compared to the body. Which again, as I said that, as I said earlier, mas evident yung sa pronotum na description. Okay? So, yes, um, it can be tricky then at time to four, no? And last one, sana tama lahat. Femora is, sorry, femora is more on the leg region, okay? Bilis magot na. Okay. And, okay, we have a few more people voting. Okay, we can end it there. And majority answered Chilhamery, which is the correct answer because of the yellowish, very distinct X-shaped color pattern in the middle. Okay. So it's great that you know how to use a dichotomous key. However, a very important skill in systematic is to construct a dichotomous key. Okay? So one way to do that is to work by splitting, starting with the general characteristics, no? So you have narrow leaf, narrow leaf versus the more a broad leaf, okay? Then the narrow leaves narrow leaves plant naman, the yellow and the blue one, no? Um, you find another way to differentiate them. So you further branch it or you fork it, okay? Same thing for the broad leaf, no? You split them further into two characteristics, okay? Again, the characters should be, should be just one, well, actually, pwede several, as long as they have an either-or character state, okay? As you can see here, it's always branched into two. And for example, dito may dalawa pang natira, syempre you branch it further. Okay? Hopefully, you're expecting that the actual workshop will be on the construction of a dichotomous key. Okay? And this is a sample dichotomous key that you can make out of it. Okay? So, kanina, um, sinabi ko na I prefer that you would start with a character, di ba? Like, leaf narrow, nar a leaf broad, flower bell-like, flower trumpet-like. Um, I would prefer this, but then again, as I said, it's preferred, no? Um, for me, that's preferred kasi, you know, you start, okay, leaf daw. So, think agad sa leaf. Rather than looking at the, um, rather than read, reading the longer statement, then, okay, leaf pala yung tinutukoy niya na yellow is something, something. Okay? So, sir, usefully it's preferred to start with, in the dichotomy scheme, to start with the most obvious or notable char characters, basically. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. Okay. Kasi medyo scary kung simula pa lang na-lost ka na kung ay alin siya A or B sa statement 1, di ba? At least yung kanina, yung sa last statement na nag na nalito yung iba. So, you know, okay. I mean, mas madaling i-backtrack, I guess, di ba? Okay, mali pala yun. So, ano siya? Okay, sige, balik tayo sa uh, statement number three. Rather than going all the way back to the very start. Okay? So, here are pointers, no? Because we will launch the workshop in a while. Here are the pointers. Start with general characters of the specimen, then move to more specific. Okay? Um, by general, we mean to say na, well, number one, more obvious. Like, halatang halata talaga, no? Uh, another would be it clearly separates, it, it clearly discriminates particular species from the rest. Okay? 
use morphological characters. So, walang warm-blooded. So, forget, what I'm trying to say is forget your um, prior knowledge on particular animals. Focus only on what you see. Do not tell us they live on land, they live on ganyan, they have backbone, they don't have backbone. Just focus on what we can see with the figure. Diba? Use parallel statements. We have demonstrated it. Uh, leaf broad, leaf narrow, etc. Okay? Oh, it's kind of clear, no? When uh, leaf broad, do not say naman eh, you're comparing leaf narrow and then your other statement is leaf yellow. Diba? So those are not parallel statements. Because one talks of color, other one talks on the width of the leaf. As much as possible, use positive statement. What is present, not what is absent. In cases that happens, like, for example, very general character, very obvious, tail present, tail absent, or leg present, leg absent. Pwede naman, di ba? Like, andali nun. For example, mong leg absent, okay, you probably eliminated or separated a good number of your samples already. Pero, if for example, Insecto, tapos antenna present or antenna absent. For example, maybe I'll backtrack here. If I give you a key, tapos yung nakalagay, antenna present, antenna absent. Oh my God, is this an antenna or not? Diba? May mga ganun pa tayong tanong. Okay? So, and mahirap hanapin yung wala kasi wala nga eh, diba? So, you will leave your your uh, reader wondering, so meron ba or wala? Or hindi ko lang ba nakikita? Alin ba yung dito? Okay? Um, again, it is preferred to focus on what is present that you can make the either or than rather what is absent. But of course, for the more obvious ones, like yun nga, present legs, diba? Ang obvious naman nun. Okay? It's okay lang yun. Avoid generalizations, which can be relative. Tall versus short plants. In some cases, the broad and narrow can be very clear naman. Parang sa pictures natin kanina, no? Pero in other cases, and I think you can, you know, you can think of, you know, some of your character states na, hmm, clear kaya to or hindi. Then avoid those which, which are rather relative. Okay? Yung iba ang ginagawa, parang um, leaf length 5 centimeters, ah, sorry, less than 5 centimeters, greater than 5 centimeters, ganyan. Pero yung iba, pag nag-measure, 5.1. So ano yan? I mean, oh, it's greater, pero talaga, like, is it definitive na greater? Di ba? Kasi baka mamaya, lumaki lang yung leaf na yun for some reason or what not, di ba? So yeah, we try to avoid generalized statements which can be relative. Okay? Question? Are there questions? Okay, so what's gonna happen is um, hmm. What's gonna happen is this, no? We will give you 20 minutes to individually construct a dichotomous key. Just 20 minutes, okay? Um, what we want you to do is, oopsie, construct individually one dichotomous key for uh, the species or yeah, the specimens that you will see use uh, Word or Google Doc. And after 20 minutes, we will have a breakout session wherein some of you will present your output for, uh, to your group. Okay? All outputs, individual outputs, will be collected by the PBO code. Okay? Again, this is, not, this is just a workshop. It's practice, no? Um, this will not be part of your, you know, the official semis, but this skill will be useful for your actual semi. So we want you to actually practice doing it individually okay by 12 noon tama ba? yeah by 12 noon we will um well i will provide instructions for the breakout okay here are your lessons Yes, sige, if you want to, you know, to work on it in writing, sige, go, go ahead.
the slide was sent on the chat also ha so yung, you know if you prefer to download it and what not go ahead And maybe I should clarify, there is not a single correct answer to this, no? There are obviously several permutations on how the, your, how the answer, the answer uh, would look like. Uh, you'll create for all. So you will create just one dichotomous key, um, including all eight of the species that you do. Okay? Parang kanina, di ba? You have a beetle, for example. You have one dichotomous key containing all four species of anceronic beetle. Parang ganun din. Pero this one, hindi lang four yung uh, species na kasama dun, pero all. In short, magawa kayo ng nag de de nag ano dito. You're breaking down a puzzle and building a new one. So if you have clarifications regarding the instructions, uh, feel free to ask them in the chat.
especially in this case, no color wood, I would say, is unreliable to be used as basis. The last one, I hope it's clear to everyone, is a sponge, okay, which is an animal, okay. If you're struggling, maybe a clue I can provide. Though, again, there is no single answer, no? There are several ways on how to approach it. But if you're struggling, a clue I can provide is you can start off by using general um, characters such as present, presence or absence of legs. Right. So again, very obvious naman dito. No? And then, in your next couplets, maybe two or three ganyan, you could pertain to number of legs. Okay, so it's just using legs, pero you can easily branch them off into um, into several and uh, several identification. So presence, absence of legs, then later on, something to do with number of legs, maybe. Okay? Analogies like comparing, um, I suppose it's not, you know, evolutionary analogies, right? Like analogy, homology, okay, naman. Um, tube shape, yes, that's good. That's allowed. As long, of course, it doesn't appear too relative, right? So, yeah, there are things naman na, you know, you can make analogy shape like this, and it's quite obvious. Okay, length will probably will prob will definitely not work here, right? Because I mean obviously it's one. Okay. So do away with length. If you can comment maybe like, I don't know, like one word or a few words or a phrase um, on how you're doing right now for us to have a sense on how things are happening from your end. Okay, someone said it hard. Go ahead, type it on the chat so we can have a vibe check on how it's doing. Okay, okay. So medyo varied. Almost done. May clear those four bit struggling with it. Okay, go ahead. Go lang in progress. Okay, okay. Hoping that we can um we can have something in ten minutes. If we're struggling, you know, uh, maybe stick with make loop. You can start with presence, absence or of legs, and then think of a second of another couplet, something to do with the number of legs. Pero please, wag naman ano ha? statement number two. Um, legs four or legs not four, and then statement number three, legs six, legs not six. Okay, okay, okay.
Um, sadly, the spider is not named after the band, but good perception there. It's named after the, spo- the supposed metallic sheen, blue sheen of the spider. But, fun fact, there are spider species named after, um, well, members of the Beatles, essentially. Ringo Starr, etc. And also, another fun fact, hindi ko alam ba't alam, alam po yung mga gantong bagay, but fun fact, um, species of spiders were named after Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. But, not yet, for Tom Holland. Wala na. You have five more minutes. Ah, that's an interesting question. Um, shorter but effective key is preferred. I guess the answer has to be no, because we want it to be comprehensive as well. So whenever there, as you saw in the Beatles canina, no, if there are really several characteristics for a particular um branching for a particular forking, then you use the several characteristics. Bayan din naman, di ba, like, if someone's using your key, then that person may opt to choose, you know, a more visible and easier to discuss, to, to categorize a uh, character. Yun na lang gagamitin niya. But essentially, what, what's preferred, we put everything such that, yun nga, no, you mentioned kanina yung mga uncertainties. At least you have, ano, you have other basis for, for your selection if it's yours.
maybe someone from the core team can answer the question about um, the submission of the output. Hi, hi. Sorry, my meet, uh, no, my meet button wasn't working. Um, the PBO lab skills will be making a G drive and they will send it here. Pero for those who cannot complete it um, during the time frame of this workshop, the assignment page has been created so you can um, send it to there. If ever, hindi kayo nakatapos during the time span of this workshop. Okay, and thank you, Marcus, for that. And with the mention of breakout rooms, here are the instructions for the breakout rooms. Okay, so one or two students per group will share their screen, practically sharing their output. No, um, they will share it to the group, and the group members will comment and critique to the Kotomuski with the goal of improving it if something needs to be. Okay, otherwise, you know, you're just approving it. Oh, okay, sige, okay, yeah. We can use that, okay? Also, I want you to discuss what are the advantages and limitations of dichotomous key in biodiversity study, okay? So you will do this as a group, maybe one. Actually, kahit one, okay lang naman, no? Um, save time then. Kahit one per group, and then just to make sure you work on improving it if something appears to be, you know, problematic about it or merong nakalimutang ilagay or idagda, ganyan. Then answer the question. What are disadvantages? What are the advantages, and what are limitations? Okay, and after maybe we can cut it down to fifteen minutes for the breakout group. No, we will return to the plenary where I will ask maybe one group to share their screen to present their output so that we can come up with an answer to this. Okay, and out a group output will be collected by the video call. Okay, clear? Are there questions? Okay, okay, clear, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so if there are no questions, we can have 15 minutes for the breakout group. And kung wala mag-volunteer, alphabetically piliin yung pangatlong member nyo, okay, to present their output. Pero kung meron nag-volunteer, it'd be good, okay? Okay, I'll see you by 12.15. So maybe let's share the uh, let's um launch the breakout room. Okay.
Oh, we'll call on one group to share their output and to answer our questions. Hopefully, naging productive ang inyong breakout room or at least meron kayo na critique or na-improve. Or, of course, better if hindi na kailangan critique kasi okay na, no? And hopefully, you've answered our questions, okay? Sige, so may I call a representative from group four to share their response. Hello there, group four, whoever was assigned to group four. You there? For now the rest, no? Yeah. For the rest, uh, for the other group, no, just submit your output to the link um, uh, posted on the chat. Okay. Group four, can we hear from you? Uh, I'll... Should I present or just go ahead? Go share. Or... You can share your screen. Go, Charles. There we go. Okay. okay so, um, this is uh, my like other case, uh, I was representing the for the group right, right now. Um, so I started with um, legs as the uh, most general uh, feature that to be to create a division. Um, the first option would be: Does the organism have legs, or does the organism not have legs? So if it, if the organism doesn't have legs, um, the well, one would move to um, question two, while if the organism has problem legs, one will move to question three. So if the organism has tube leg structures, that would be uh, ATC minutes, this is the sponge, I believe. If the organism has, has a long and center form, uh, one will move to, move to question four. So question four would be the organism has prominent segmentation on the body. So that's a protocol of annelids. So that would be El terrestris. And if the organism has prominent eyes and passing different coloration between the dorsal and ventral portions, that would be the snake, C. Helena. Then if, if we go back to um, question three for for those organisms with legs, with prominent legs, if the organism has five, if the organism has five pairs of legs and many appendages, that would be the the prod. And if and for less uh, to, to number to move to number five, if the organism has four pairs of legs, that's a typical of an arachnid. That would be um, P metallica. And if less than four, would be uh, move to number six. If the organism has prominent fur coverage, that would be the uh, would, that would be a binturong. And if the organism doesn't have fur, move to question seven. And legs that are long relative to the body and the antennae. If the organism has legs long or that are long relative to the body and antennae that are relatively short, that would be the J. Leonardo de Capri. Uh, if the legs are relatively short, but the antennas are prominent, that would be each antennae. Okay, thank you, Charles, for sharing your uh, key. No, um, it's quite amazing that you're able to come up with this. I mean, I think we all know that you have, you know, a rather limited time to work on your work on your key. Okay, so um, good that you started with the legs. You know that. Easily, that would easily uh, discriminate the three from the other five. You know? so it's very, and it's very easy to observe that, you know, as you pointed out. Nina. And then you move further by saying four, five pairs of legs, um, and then four pairs, and then four or less than four pairs. You know? That would easily discriminate um, the characteristics. Fur also you know, is rather visible so that for the binturong compared to uh, those which do not have fur. You know? Um, we're, I guess, we're quite lucky uh, in a way because we can, you know, we can have a feel for you and get now we can validate it tangibly. So that's a good decision. Um, maybe something we can 
I noted that you used a uh, tube like structure versus long and slender form for number two, no? Uh, maybe a suggestion I can make is perhaps we can think of a character, uh, a character which would um, split them further using the same basis, no? I'll say like tube like, but tubes tend to be long and slender, then the but that might be confusing, no? Um, What's important, and this is for everyone, what's important to remind ourselves here is, you know, like your perception for something that's, you know, very phonetic, very visual, may not necessarily be the perception of other people. And we don't, we want to eradicate that. Like, may sense yun sayo, di ba? Pero when other compare, uh, when, other, when you ask other people, some of them, yeah, ah, okay, gets go. Some of them will say, parang hindi masyado, okay? Um, I wonder, no, how the other, uh, how the other group decided on splitting the snake, the earthworm, and the sponge. Um, top of mind, maybe, what you can say is, um, well, one is sessile, or, um, yeah, the organism is sessile, or, or is it motile? Can it move around, or is it uh, attached to a substrate? Diba? The sponge cannot move around, but snake and the earthworm can. So maybe that, uh, that could be a good basis for it. Um, another way to do it would probably be the segmentation. You would uh, you would um, discriminate the earthworm already from the snake and the sponge. There's nothing wrong with it. No, it na maybe top of mind among the three most closely related earthworms, the snake, which is valid, diba? But remember, we're working on phonetics, eh, diba? So how they, how you uh, how you see them talaga if they look similar, no? Uh, segmentation, okay, uh, you. The, you separate the earthworm, pero the snake and the sponge can easily be differentiated. I think much more easier to differentiate them now because, um, after you say that they're not segmented. No? So that comment, I guess, applies also to number four. No? Um, okay, but yung, parang you use the basis of segmentation and then the I for the other category. No? So maybe work on, uh, compare them on, you know, on the same Level. Actually, you're on the right track to the segmentation. Baka segmentation is prominent. Segmentation is not, is not observed. Maganon siguro. It would be workable. Okay? Um, I appreciate the creativity for number seven kasi when I put those to the front, okay, how will they differentiate it? Diba? That could be tricky. Um, there are several ways really to go about it. In this case, color might be acceptable, maybe, right? Um... Top of mind, one has a more elongated elytra, and hydrain atmosphere is more elongated, no? rather than the more um, taut and robust looking for the Leonardo DiCaprio. But again, there are many different possibilities on how to go about it. Okay? And I think that you made a great attempt on, you know, on working on your piece. So thank you. Thank you, Charles, for sharing. Okay? See you how about the answer to our question? Can anyone answer our question? What are the advantages and limitations of the dichotomous key? Maybe we can call on someone from group number five. Group number five, kung naririnig niyo ako, pakigalaw ang bato. Group number five. Um, hello po. Hello. Hi, so our answer for regarding po dun sa limitations that we have encountered regarding the dichotomous key is that it's um, isolating the organism into a specific characteristics, into specific characteristics that makes it more limited into grouping them into a specific po na order or group. Kasi po, okay. it's too isolated na hindi po masyadong na take into consideration yung other characteristics and other po na mga present na pwede pa pong i-distinguish sa iba. So that's okay. one part of the limitations. And as well as, since it's only based on the morphology, sometimes it's difficult din po to differentiate the morphology of very similar organisms that, however po, they are really different in terms of how they behave. So I think that's one of the limitations po. Thank you po. Okay. Very good, no? Very good. Um, of course, it's helpful. I hope you appreciate somehow no, that it's helpful because it helps in identification. Again, no, pang sinabi ko kanina, 
rather than going through all the disc long descriptions for each species, diba? you have this simplified, well, sort of simplified guide. However, it's also limited, as mentioned nga by term, no? Kasi for several reasons. No? Um, one of which is it's too, it isolates their evolutionary history, for one, and how they are actually closely related. Diba? Relating to what I commented kanina, um, pwede yung ihiwala yung earthworm by segmentation para maiwan yung snake and yung swan. By doing that, which you can do that, no? mas related, quote-unquote, yung snake to swan. Diba? Um, it doesn't reflect, you can do that for a dichotomous key, but that will not reflect evolutionary history, which is fine for because it's a dichotomous key naman talaga, genetic um, classification. Okay? Another limitation maybe is its availability. Diba? Siguro, ang Cernex parang, okay, that's very workable kasi nandiyan na yung key for you, diba? But remember, that's only for four species, not, you know, like 100, 200 species. And um, and we suppose that for all the life on Earth, dichotomous keys are, you know, um, or the availability of dichotomous key corresponds only to a minuscule percentage of the actual diversity. Diba? So, yes, they're helpful, but at the same time, they're not always available. Okay? And among other limitations, as mentioned, so good. Thank you, Charm, for sharing those insights from your, uh, from your uh, discussion. Okay, are there questions about um the workshop in the session today? Is this a Saturday? Then, man, if there are, kindly comment them in the chat. No. If there are no questions, maybe I will proceed with some announcements. Um, first is to download and install Mega 7 and some, and I think you're informed about this already, you know? If you have concerns about Mega 7, if, for example, you tried it or it doesn't, you can install it and whatnot, feel free to comment it a little later, no? Um, para let's try to troubleshoot it. Uh, Mega X is available, and I believe that it's more for what this for for Apple for Mac users. It's more um how do we say this? Uh, better compatibility, no? Mega X. Um, it's okay, naman. I'll be running the workshop using Mega Seven. Um, I just don't like how Mega X looks and works. I mean, yes. Okay, so Mega Seven is pretty straightforward. So maybe there are several deviations from how you will perform the activity. No, so I'll be using Mega Seven. Okay, lang if you want to use Mega X or this, this what's workable with your unit. No, okay, lang din naman yan. Uh, be ready to run a web browser. It, it, it's again, um, we understand certain limitations. No, um, uh, but if you can just get, just be ready to you know do a quick Google Chrome um run or whatnot or whatever browser that you may have, okay? Yeah. And uh, optional, I indicated it as optional. Um, I made available a refresher video lecture playlist on um, concepts on uh, phylogeny, no? It's optional because I believe, I mean, I know that it's part of the GenBio 2 curriculum. So practically, ang laman nun, you know, terminologies like out group, um, homology, or homoplasy, mga ganyan, okay? Monophily, paraphyde. Uh, if you feel confident, you know, about those things, okay na, huwag yung panoorin. Pero just so we are on the same page, if you wanna, you know, go through it before the next session and before you take your semi-exam, your semi-final exam, I think that would be helpful, okay? So, but yeah, it's optional. Next week, uh, we'll be focusing on the um, phylogenetic classification. So, the, so ito, morphological, what you see, it, next week, we'll be working with DNA sequences. Um, if you like the thrill of working with puzzles, parang yung kanina na may figure figure kayo dyan, na, pag, na branching, ganun din siya, but on a different level because we'll be working with, with DNA. And there are, uh, there is... Um, I'd say uh, there is a correct answer to the puzzle. Ngayon medyo, okay, sige, pwede yan, pwede yan. Next week, there is a particular answer to the puzzle. Okay? 
thank you for the session. It's my first time teach, you know, like live again, like an actual lecture, not just random Q&A um, in a long while. Thank you for being participative and for engaging with the activity. And enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you can like digitally give a round of applause, please give a round of applause to our wonderful lecturer, um, Sir Amon Delocado, ladies and gentlemen. Um, sir, may I share my screen? Yes. Sure. All right, thank you so much. So ah, here we go. Give me a few moments. Here we go. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's Lab Skills Workshop. Now, Sir Emma, right before we go, we'd love to present you this. Let me, there you go. Certificate of Appreciation presented to Emmanuel D. Delocado for sharing his knowledge at the Philippine Biology Olympiad 2021 semifinals workshop masterclass given today, this January 30. Um, no signature so that nobody can forge a certificate. So don't worry, you'll be receiving the actual copy soon enough. Ladies and gentlemen, give him a round of applause. So again, we'll be having some final reminders right before we leave today. So we're going to be having some changes in the schedule. Now, I know at usually at this time, we'd be having a break at 12.30, a two hour, um, two hour break, uh, an hour and a half break until um, two o'clock. However, we'll be having um, some changes to the schedule give, uh, given, given some unexpected changes. So for one, your lecturer for this afternoon, um, Sir Mesh Maini will be unable to attend. However, in his absence, he was able to upload us a video lecture. Rather than live stream it right now, uh, we have decided that you may watch it in your own time in preparation for the exam. Given that the exams are tomorrow, it's best that you be having the extra time to both rest and watch it on your own. With these changes in schedule, here are some final reminders. One, um, the lecturer for the lecture, the lecture by Sir Mesh Maini has been uploaded. I think only a minute ago. Um, it should be listed there in the canvas under the quiz B. So if you need to watch it, watch it there asynchronously. So in your own time, we won't be live streaming it for you guys. So if you guys have the time to prepare for tomorrow's exam. Other final reminders, please upload your assignments to the respective canvas assignment, Lab Skills Workshop by Kata Muski. It'd be great so we can give you feedback, review it, and give it a look. Next thing, because the exam is tomorrow, keep in mind the following things. Again, we've listed the coverage last week, but to recap you guys, here's the coverage for tomorrow's exam. The exam will again be one hour and 10 minutes covering evolution, history of evolutionary thought, evidences for evolution, basic concepts in phylogeny, genetic variation, natural selection, biodiversity, and speciation. Keep in mind for the lab skills materials, again for tomorrow, you'll be needing a laptop and a scientific calculator. Furthermore, we'll be needing past Google Sheets and TPS TIG. Keep in mind that the Mega 7 that Sir M and the local has um, given to us today will be needed for next week's wor workshop and not for tomorrow's exam. So again, for tomorrow, we'll be needing past Google Sheets or an MS Excel and TPS TIG. Let's see. Keep in mind a couple of other things for tomorrow's exam. Our buffer waiting and registration time will be 12.40 to 1 o'clock. However, we can set call time at 12.45 instead. This is so that we can start the exam on time at 1 to 4.30 p.m. Do the physical room setups, have the marshal check, etc. Now, for lab skills coverage, keep in mind that we'll be having ecology and animal anatomy. Everything in the workshops that has been discussed will be part of the lab skills coverage and the lab skills will be two hours. Now, other reminders, if you have any technical difficulties, especially with the software, please feel free to reach out to the core team. You may contact us through the P Canvas or PBO email. If there are conflicts with exam scheduling or there are other concerns due to power outages, please message us as early as today or even now so that we, we can make the proper adjustments. Now, the workshop today has been recorded, so keep in mind that it'll be uploaded soon enough for your perusal tonight. So just give us a few moments to upload it. Now, if you have any further questions, please send us an email to pboolympiad at gmail.com. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's session. So thank you all so much for coming. Before you all go, please take a look at this um, bit.ly to review us for today. Give us some comments, suggestions. How did we do? Did we do any better? Maybe did we do a little bit worse? Would you like, um, you have any concerns that would like to be addressed? Please send it here. 
Yes. For again, the genetics masterclass for this Saturday has been uploaded to the canvas. If it's not there, it's probably still in the process of uploading. Uh, two hour videos do take a while. So it'll be uploaded soon. Um, okay, for the group for the group homework, preferably um, they're asking whether it's the individual or the group one, the one chosen as a group. I think preferably you should say what do you want, Mark? Uh, what should say, Marcus? The group. Hello. So for a clarification, the G Drive link sent to you guys. That's for your individual um, dichotomous keys. While the assignments posted in Canvas, those are the groups one, the one where you um, collaborated with the people in your breakout sessions a while ago. Upload that into Canvas. I, I guess for consistency, is there a format name enough for the paper, Deepa? No. Okay, for format, please put in your group number followed by your surname and your first name when you upload it to the canvas. So the following format would be number followed by your surname, first name. So that's the format you should upload it to the G Drive. Now, again, once again, please take a look at this um, evaluation form to tell us how we did. Did we do better? Did we do worse? Is there any concerns you'd like to address? What did you enjoy? What did you not like? That would be great. Um, thank you. About the recording of evolution po. Iba po yung kasi yung nakalagay sa canvas. Say that again, EJ. Uh, is this recording evolution and something is different been uploaded? Opo. Is that what you said, uh, EJ? Yeah. Opo. Yung upload po under sa evolution is yung ecology workshop po. Hindi po yung evolution masterclass. Okay, we'll have it double checked by the core team. That would be Quizby and Lab Skills. Um, oh, wait. Sorry. Hello. Give me a couple okay, seconds. So, um, I uh, PM'd. Here we go. Set the format. Sorry, I accidentally PM'd it. Hello. Uh, we'll, fix, yeah, we'll fix the evolution recording in a bit. So within the hour, it will be revised. Sorry about that. Thank you, Paul. Is there any other questions or clarifications before uh, we proceed to conclude today's obsessions? Then, what is the naming format for individual? Can it be any? Uh, for individual, it'll simply be your surname followed by your first name. Okay, thank you. So, capital letters for your surname followed by your first name. Yep, for clarification, due to um, scheduling concerns and because your exam is tomorrow, we'd love to give you guys more time to review. There won't be a session this afternoon. Instead, the, lect uh, the asynchronous lecture will be uploaded. This is so that you may prepare for the exams tomorrow. Hi, hello. Just ano, a clarification lang then. It wasn't listed sa PowerPoint kanina. Pero you might have seen our announcement regarding ImageJ. For all of the Mac users out there na weren't able to make TPS work or wasn't able to secure a Windows laptop or talagang wala nang ma-work with TPS dig, Please refer to the video I posted regarding ImageJ. You can use that as an option. Take note na lang of the limitations it has sa video. There you go. So take a look at the canvas because that's what we'll be posting our technical support and uh, answering other concerns and questions. Uh, for only the submissions one. group, only one. So just uh, discuss amongst yourselves as to who's going to submit. Thank you. All right. If that in mind, before we go and end and answer more questions, we're going to have um, a picture taking as per usual. So Carms, are you there? All right. So ladies and gentlemen, as per usual, please.